Hey everybody, my name is Kirk Barber with Real Elite. Today I'm going to talk to you about reading and getting more out of reading. Uh, actually, I'm going to teach you Ryan Holiday's note card system, which I'll talk about. But first, I want you to understand a little bit of the uh, underlying reasons to do this and why it's important. The most important thing to understand about reading is that it's actually a contact sport. It's something that I did not make the sound I wanted it to, <laughs> uh, but it's it's just it's actually a contact sport to read. The reason a lot of people are turned off by reading or they don't think they get a lot out of reading is because we were taught how to read completely wrong and there's a movement that audible and listening to audiobooks is reading. Listening to audiobooks is great. I do it as a supplement. You know, like taking a supplement vitamin because I'm not getting the right nutrients. That's what audible listening and audio listening is, which is fine. And it's also good to get you know, the, the, um, the, the sounds into your ear holes that are pleasant and nice and good. But, and so there's a lot of positive things. I'm not going to go into it, but audio listening is completely different than actual visual reading. It's a different mindset. It's a different process when you listen to something. I mean, there's a reason why uh, when you listen to something, it's passive. When you go read it, it's active. There's a reason why babies can hear and even begin to speak long before they learn to read because reading is a much more difficult, complex process. And it engages your mind in a vastly different way. Babies learn to listen and speak because it sounds, but when you're trying to translate um, you know, these black scratches, these are drawings. Like all these little words, we call them words, they're little drawings on a piece of paper that we have to translate. That is a very complex process. And some people you know, are not good at it. Like when you think that you're good at it because you went to grade school and they taught you a little bit about reading, I was the same way, but it takes a lot of work. Okay, now you might wanna think about why this is important, but here's what, you know, if you're thinking about yourself as a reader because you listen to audiobooks, I'm here to tell you you're not, you're not a reader. And here's the important thing about why this is important and why I wanna stress this so much. Um, listening to audiobooks versus reading is kind of like walking on even steady ground versus running up a rocky hill without a trail or a rocky mountain and you're just running up as fast as you can. It's a vastly different you know experience and it's important to understand the difference between the passiveness and the activeness. I mean to be even more frank about the difference between audio and the visual translation of words is it's very, it's more like, you know, driving to the gym versus going into the gym and lifting weights until you break down all the, the muscles in your body and grow bigger muscles. That's the difference between audio listening and visual translation of text. So I wanted to show you a little bit of the, the note card system I learned two years ago, which has taken my reading to the next level. I had already done some elements of this throughout my whole life just naturally, but I learned a lot from Ryan Holiday, and you'll see a link here uh, below or in the comments. And you know, we can kind of, uh, you can kind of learn a little bit more by going to his blog about his note card system, which is a great system that he learned from Robert Greene, the author of Mastery and 48 Laws of Power, amazing books I highly recommend. This is actually one of Ryan Holiday's note cards. I actually got one of these because it, it kind of helped me learn a little bit um, about how he did it so I could try to improve my method. And there's a couple elements to this. This um, is apparently written in 1778. It was from Franklin to, his, uh, to a rival of his. I don't remember this rival, Lee. And the note card says, if you do not cure yourself of this temper, it will end in, in uh, um, insanity, of which it is the symptomatic forerunner. <clears throat> Had a little bit of difficulty reading that. But, you know, it, the, the point is that it doesn't have to be perfect. That's what I like about it. it mine is the same way, much worse, actually. So uh, one of the things you're going to need to do, so we'll talk about the, the trappers and the things that I keep my note cards in. One of the things you really need to do a lot of is interact with your text. That's step one to this note card system is interact with the text. 
So again, with audio, you it's very difficult to interact. I mean, you could sit and take notes, and that's at least something, but it's not the same as you know. I'm just I just picked this up at random, but you'll notice that I have little uh, bits of paper up here, tabs to kind of that I have marked, saying certain important concepts that have helped me or that I you know I'm trying to understand or whatever it is. Also in the book, I don't care how expensive it is. I mean, you can't see it. I'm not going to you know scroll down, but there's a, a, you know, a very expensive Great Books of the Western World series. And actually, I will pull one up so you can see. Um, so it's a great book. This, I have a whole series, very expensive Great Books of the Western World. It goes all the way back from ancient times to modern times of all the great, greatest works of all time. And I don't give a shit. <laughs> I write in them. I write in them, pen, paper. I do not care. Books are not sacred to me in that way. I think that the sacredness are the ideas within books and that it is uh, apostateness <laughs> to not engage with this book. This guy who wrote this and is dead now doesn't care that you take care of his book and you treat it as a sacred text that you never touch and, and, and rip apart and put you know tabs in to kind of make sure you learn from it. He wants you to engage. He wants to fight with you. That's why people write down things that last forever. So that's the first thing you need to do is you need to get books that you engage with that you like. You need to read that book. You need to mark in the book and you need to write in the margins when things are interesting to you. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I mean, uh, it's very interesting to me to go back to books I read, you know, when I was like 18, 19, 20 and see me writing in the margins very angrily because I disagreed with the author. I was like, I'm such an idiot. Like, this guy's a moron, right? Like, I would do that. I would get so upset at certain things. And I still get a little upset. I still get, like, I'm, because reading is grappling. It's, it's, your, it's your mind versus the mind of this great man or, or, or any woman or, or man, or, you know, not great, whatever. Just these people out there that have put their words down in a written form for all time. So that's a really important part of the process is read books that you enjoy. I would start like physical books. I would start with books that are most interesting to you. For instance, um, you know, if you're a business person, then get business books. And then the next thing is I would make sure you always have a pen or pencil mark in them. You don't have to do tabs. Another thing you can do is you can just, if you find something interesting, just leaf dog leaf ear it. You know, people say don't, and, and it'll be all dog-eared. People will say, don't do that. To hell with them. They're not, they're not readers. Like real readers contact sport. They're passive readers. You know, they have a fat, sloppy mind versus a lean, strong mind. And that's what we're trying to build. Just like going to the gym, sometimes it gets messy and dirty and smelly. And you got to do what you got to do to get healthy, right? It's the same thing with books. And, um... Yeah, and the other thing is you have to own the books. I think that's important because you're doing all this stuff. So one of the things, there's a culture of trading and like, I don't want to own books. And yet people spend, you know, 40, 50, $60,000 on a car or hundreds of thousands of dollars on a house. Even that's going to perish. Whereas books, you want to keep those books forever. Um, and so, and they should be yours. They should be yours forever. Like I will let someone who lives in my house <laughs> read a book if they don't touch it and they just want to kind of glance through it, but it's my book. It's because this is the ideas that are going to be mine to teach to you guys, to teach to my team, to teach to you know um, uh, the the people in my community, or to write articles about, to write podcast, to you know record podcasts, to record video blogs, to to you know write books about. It comes from this, so it's it's sacred to me, and I think that I hope that a little bit of this kind of pushes that on you and teaches you that. The next thing you're going to do once you get your book is I would recommend getting these, you know, and if you go to Ryan Holiday's uh, blog on this and you can Google Ryan Holiday note card system and you'll find it right at the top. But um, I recommend one four by six note cards, getting a whole bunch of those um, and then getting these little trapper things, these vaults trappers. And what they do is just to have a great place to organize. You can get these little green tabs so you can organize them by category. And the more uh, you get, the more you can, you know, kind of categorize them in different ways. And sometimes I'll have when I'm working on, uh, you know, I, I'm working on a book right now. So I have one that is just for that book. 
just note cards related to that book and they're from all of the different things that I have. Um, you know, eventually I have a couple of these now, but eventually you might need to upgrade to getting a bigger trapper so that you can fit more of your note cards in here. So <clears throat> these are some of the ingredients to a note card system. Now a note card doesn't have to be complicated. You know, generally this is my method and I showed you Ryan Holiday a little bit. My method is, you know, I just kind of write some kind of title at the top. I don't know if you can read it, power of word of mouth. I usually have a quote or an idea or a story. I'll try to synopsize it. Or sometimes I'll just use it as reference. So I'll like, you know, it's kind of like my own Dewey Decimal System. So I can go back, find the, the book that I was talking about. I can get that story. I can extrapolate, extract that story, use it for my own purposes. You know, what Ryan Holiday apparently does, he has blank on both sides. Uh, his note cards are blank on both sides. Mine has lined because my handwriting is even worse than his. His handwriting is not that great. Uh, but again, he's writing fast. I'm sure his handwriting is better if you were to slow down. Because you don't want to, like, this isn't something that you want to, like, make perfect. It's for you. It's not for publication. Um, and, you know, I don't know how Ryan Holiday feels about me sharing this. <laughs> uh, so, you know, and then usually I will, or always I will put the, on the back, I will put the page number and the book it came from. And a lot of times I'll put some, you know, if I need to, I'll put something else. Like, um, for instance, Ryan Holiday put a idea, paranoia, and then he explained who, this is a quote from Frank, Benjamin Franklin to his rival, I think political rival, someone, something Lee, and I vaguely remember that story. So that is essentially the note card system. You know, if you're, uh, you know, when I, I was a district manager for vector marketing and I sold knives to people and I was, you know, I ran a whole district, I had my own office, I had receptionists, I had hundreds, you know, sales representatives, and I was doing meetings where every day almost, where I was trying to convince them and inspire them and teach them how to go out and make more sales. And if you're in that kind of situation, this note card system is highly valuable. I didn't have this note card system then, but it's valuable because you're always looking for more material to use, to teach, to show, to explain, to help. And this is something that really, really helps you get material. If you're a speaker, you know, if you're a writer, if you're a podcaster, if you want to be, uh, you know, in the public sphere and you want to have interesting things to say, um, you know, these are very helpful to have. Ronald Reagan was famous for having what's called a commonplace book. And Ryan Holiday also talks about a commonplace book, which is similar to this kind of system, because you want to have a lot of material to draw from. That way you can, you know, deploy that toward people and helping them get what they, uh, you know, helping teach them or help them through whatever it is. So that... That is the Ryan Holiday, Robert Greene, my you know bastardized version of the note card system. I hope you Google Ryan Holiday note card system. You kind of get some of these, and if you do, tell me below. Go go you know or message me. Give me the first note card you create, and I'll read it on the daily business book tip you know of the day if you, if that's something you want, and I'll you know throw you a shout out. Like show me what you got. Let's create some readers out in the world, and let's get out there and make some contact happen. Kurt Barbera, really have a great day.